Silk Song! Milk Song! Hello, my fellow Farloom fanatics! It's your boy Primacon back at you again with another banger. Today, I want to rank every single area shown in Silk Song from my least favorite all the way to the cream of the top, the piece of resistance. Just because the game isn't out yet, just because there's no news about it, doesn't mean I can't make content. Okay, let's look at the Hollow Knight wiki. I'm sure they have a very nice, coherent, easy to understand, very, very, very well documented area catalog, right? Let's see, so it's song areas, okay. So they got five named areas. Then they have following areas have not confirmed name, although names used, okay. So they have some of that. These areas have no names or clear indication of a connection with the previous ones. Ah, this is all garbage. If only I knew someone who actually took time to take these areas into account, join them together where they make sense, and make a map of Silk Song before we even get the game. Oh yeah, so jokes aside, I'm gonna be referencing to this video when picking what areas to rank in my list. A year later, and this is still the most comprehensible, the best area list out there of Silk Song. Hey man, what else can you expect from the best of the best? That's why it's the GOAT. Coming in at number 10, we have the desert, which is all these dusty rooms that Moss Pack clumps into one big area. Honestly, that makes sense. Now, the most exciting thing about this area is the boss last judge who happens to be in this area. Other than that, the reason this area comes at number 10 is because there's not much interesting going on other than the fumes of dust, the fart clouds that you can see all over the place. Other than that, this is a pretty visually uninteresting place. Not much to say about it. For now, this is gonna sit comfortably at the 10th spot in my list. Before I go forward, I should clarify, even at the very bottom, I love all these areas. I love everything about this game. There is no denying that. It's all a banger. And it's also gonna be interesting to see when all the areas are revealed to us, when the game does come out, how different my tier list, my ranking would stand. I should make an updated video on this topic when the game is actually out. And you know what will keep you up to date whenever that comes out? SUBSCRIBING! Yeah! Fuck! How do you all put up with me? At number 9, it's the Dark Forest. So you know how there's a Bone Forest in Silk Song that was super popular among Hollow Knight fans because it's a cancelled area in Hollow Knight? Well, there's basically a regular forest in the game as we can see, and the most prominent feature about this forest seems to be the ant colony. I'm really, really excited to see those ants. I don't know why. I don't know. Maybe it's the ant queen. Maybe because it's the red color scheme. And red is my favorite color, as you can tell by the color of my shirt. But yeah, the reason this is at number 9 is because I feel like when it comes to forests, we have better areas like Masi Grotto. And when it comes to the whole bone ideology of the ants, we have better areas like the bone forest. So the most interesting part about this area is actually the NPCs that reside in the forest. So for that reason, it sits comfortably at number 9. At number 8, this is where it gets really really exciting and everything from here is basically top tier in my opinion and I'm really excited about it. But at number 8, we gotta talk about Citadel Base as Mossback calls it. Basically, it's the area leading up to the Citadel according to him. But what catches my eye about it is, well, A, we get to fight Seth there, who's one of the most interesting boss. If you guys don't know, Seth is a boss that was designed by a fan who unfortunately passed away due to cancer. But their legacy will forever live on in Silk Song, and that's just another one of those many things that make this game beautiful, in my opinion. But other than fighting Seth, this area is very outdoorsy. We can see these crazy taproot system coming out of whatever the fuck is the ceiling. We can see like tall weeds growing everywhere, a lot of vegetation, crazy like old crooked elevators, a swamp-like structure. Basically what I'm trying to say is this area has very outdoors vibe, very swampy vibe and we really never saw anything like that in Hollow Knight. In fact, we don't even see anything like that in Silk Song other than this one area. I've always been a sucker for that, like this might sound crazy, but it actually reminds me of the setting of Resident Evil 7, with the Louisiana setting, the old dilapidated houses, the swamp, you know what I mean? For that reason, this sits at number 8. At number 7, we got Deep Docks, where you can fight my girl Lace. Might be controversial to uh, rank this area so low, but this is an area which we have seen a lot out of, not only in screenshots and trailers, but also this was one of the two areas prominently featured in the Silk Song demo. Now it's at number 7 and not higher in my list because 
A, we've already seen this area a lot, so the novelty kind of wears off over time, but even if I were to put my biases aside and rate this area, like, legitimately directly, I like the lava, sure, but, but, I still feel like this area is topped by some other areas that do what it does better, those being Forest of Bones and the Watchtower in the Citadel, we'll get to those later. One of the most interesting thing about this area is the Bell Dudes. This area has a lot of interesting uh, NPCs, one of them being the Forge Daughter, which is gonna be the nailsmith of uh, this game. This area will probably teach the player to get good because the Bell NPCs are told to be very much more challenging than the basic simpletons we had in Hollow Knight. They have bells as protections and they use instruments as shields to charge at you. Very dynamic enemies. Very cool industrial looking area, nothing about it is natural. The lava is very well animated, like you can see the distorted heat waves coming off of the ground, Hornet can run on coals, a lot of cool things happening in this area. That's why it deserves a solid number 7 spot. Now, the whole reason I called it controversial is because number 6 is Mossy Grotto. A lot of people would put Deep Docks above Mossy Grotto, but I disagree. First of all, the color green that's used for this area is just amazing. It's much brighter and vibrant than Green Path ever was, or even Queen's Garden. And as I mentioned in the Dark Forest at number 9, this is why Mossy Grotto is so high above that because in my opinion, as an area, it's just way more interesting. The environments look really nice. And the starting area where Hornet starts off, you can see such a big cavern behind her. It gives the area a big sense of scale, and I believe that this area will house a lot of mysteries that we'll come back to later on in the game because it's the starting area. So, you know, 10-20 hours into the game when we come back here, we may unlock a big secret because who knows? Think about it. The first area, Forgotten Crossroads, was becoming so boring and a cakewalk by the end of the game that Team Cherry did something really cool and made it infected. It really leads me to believe that Team Cherry will do something similar with Mossy Grotto. I'm not saying that it'll get infected as well, but who knows, maybe the area will get flooded or something else will happen to it. There's also that Witch Cauldron thing in there that gets me really excited, I don't know. I really like that fucking cackling NPC building up something in his cauldron. It's just very very cool. This is also the area where we meet the NPC who teaches us how to play our needle. So that's again, very very cool in my opinion. All the NPCs, the, the environment, this was one of the two areas showed in the demo. I rank Mossy Grotto at number 6. Ooh, now we're about to cook, we're getting into top 5. At number 5 is Greymore. Greymore, according to Team Cherry, is one of their largest areas they have ever made. That statement alone knocks this puppy up a couple of slots in my list. Team Cherry is notorious for making really big connected areas in Hollow Knight. I think the biggest area in Hollow Knight is Deep Nest, followed by City of Tears. Deep Nest is fucking massive, and they're saying that they made an area even bigger than Deep Nest, and from what it seems, it's way bigger than Deep Nest, because it seems to have a lot of sub areas that are all collectively part of Greymoor. I also really, really, really like the graveyard setting. If you guys don't know, I'm a sucker for horror and supernatural, and I really like the cemetery vibes this area has going on. You know when they say Farloom is haunted by Silk and Song? No area feels more haunted than Greymoor. The area kind of reminds me of Outlast 2 in a way. Very, very exciting, and this area will probably have so many secrets. So many hidden rooms and passages, many bosses to fight, I am really really looking forward to fully mapping out and exploring Greymoor. I also believe that this area will some be somewhere in the center of the game, just because it makes sense to have such a big area to be connected with everything else around it, but that's just pure speculation. At number 4, we got the water areas, or as I like to call it, Better Fog Canyon. This area is what Fog Canyon was always meant to be. Oh my god, this area kicks Fog Canyon down, steals its lunch money and takes a big dump right on its face. I am really excited by this and I am also really excited by the boss fight they showed in this area because that boss seemed to be manipulating the terrain all around it and it just seemed like a really cool boss. Kinda reminds me of Dung Defender, I don't know why. The colors in this area are just very very beautiful. It's very blue and pink, which is such a contrast to a lot of grey and green areas we see in Silksong. 
and a lot of industrial browns and oranges, purple, blues and pinks are such a big contrast to all of that which makes this area pop out. Even with all the areas we have, it pops out the most and I believe that trend will continue when we are revealed every single area in the game. Very very vibrant environment, super cool interesting enemies that shoot laser at you, which is so funny because in the last video I made I was playing fan made silk song games and one of the games had lasers and I completely forgot about the fact that there are actual lasers in silk song and I was like god I hope silk song doesn't have lasers, but I forgot! Despite how little we actually know about it, it's visuals presentation alone ranks it top 4 for me. Oh, but now we're getting into the good stuff, baby! Top 3! Let's go! At number 3, we got Bone Forest, or Forest of Bones, whatever you fancy. This is a cut content area from Hollow Knight. We had Hollow Knight screenshots in this area, and unfortunately, it was cut. Now, I still believe that was the right choice by Team Cherry, because in all the environments that we got in Hollow Knight, a Forest of Bones would just feel very out of place. Not only with its narrative, but also, just with the game worlds. I mean, where the fuck do you even put it? Maybe next to Deepness, but I don't know. But it fits so well in Silk Song. It fits so well, because it weaves itself into the narrative. Because Hornet needs bone shards. A lot of these little fucking dudes, like the Ant People, have bone masks and skulls around them like protection. Who the fuck doesn't want an area where you feel like you're walking on skeletons? It's just so fucking metal, dude. There's not much explanation that needs for why Forest of Bones is so fucking cool. I'm so happy that they're bringing it back and I bet you that this area will have one of the most banger soundtracks. I really hope they incorporate some of those old cartoon sounds, like very tribal sounds from cartoons like Tom and Jerry back in the day. Now they did bring back Forest of Bones but only if they brought back the Snail Village, this game might actually be good. Now my second most anticipated area is the Bell City. The Bell Keep City looks insane. It looks like the most alive place ever. It's like City of Tears on crack. I am, I, I don't know, every time like I see that little gif of Hornet sitting at the bench of the Bell City, I am mind blown, man. I am mesmerized. It makes me so excited for the game. Like, I want it right the fuck now. I want to explore this city. There are NPCs walking around, there's gonna be a lot of shops in this city, probably banger fucking soundtrack. Visually speaking, this is one of the most interesting areas in Silk Song. It's right up my alley and I really feel like this place will be very very alive, bustling with population and activity and I feel like you can get a lot of cool things here, a lot of shops in the city and it also seems to be a late game area. I'm really sad that we don't know much about this because that little gif we have of this place is really fucking cool man, it, it's one of the best, best screenshots of Silk Song that has been shown to us so far. But without further ado, number one spot, no surprise to anyone who's been paying attention, the Citadel. Now we haven't seen much of the Citadel which makes sense because they shouldn't spoil that area, but this little clock tower that's so far been predicted to be in the Citadel is so cool. I am, okay, fun fact about me. I'm a big history buff and I love the Industrial Revolution. I love learning about the early 1900s. I love the setting in that show Peaky Blinders because it's so industrial and this area is just that. All these cog wheels spinning about, all the mechanical aspects of it, the fact that you can feel that you are in a very very late game important area, the fucking big scissor dude chomping on us, the fact that it's the final area, I feel like Team Sherry will really put a lot of their eggs in this one basket. This area is going to absolutely shine and so far, not only is it my most anticipated, but from what it's been shown to us, the most visually and narratively interesting area, at least to me. And it easily, easily takes the cake on the number one spot. Now I know I don't have a lot to say about my top 3 or 5 picks as much as I have to say about my bottom 5 picks, but that's just because we haven't really seen much of these areas, so we don't have a lot to go off of. But the fact that with such little information, these already top my list, I think that should give you an idea of how much I like these areas. And I feel like this is the very good video to talk about this point. Silk Song, when it comes to graphics, is leagues and leagues and leagues above Hollow Knight. Not only are the environments so much more detailed, we get a lot more animation and a lot more animated background assets 
more than we ever did in Silksong. Everything feels more alive, you can feel the wind blowing, not just hear it, you know what I mean? There's so many more NPCs, the world just seems to be more real and believable than Hollow Knight. Graphically speaking, technologically speaking, this game is going to be a marvel in indie gaming. And I fucking cannot wait, man. I cannot wait. But yeah, that's my ranking of the top 10 areas in Silksong. What do you guys think? Do you guys agree? Do you guys disagree? What would your ranking be? Let me know in the comments below. Leave this video with a like if you guys enjoyed and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys soon with a new video. Permacon out.